line with us is uh, Dr. Michael Mann, the Distinguished Professor of Meteorology and the Director of the Earth Science System, Earth System Science Center at Penn State University. He's the author of several books, including The Madhouse Effect, How Climate Change Denial is Threatening Our Planet, Destroying Our Politics, and Driving Us Crazy. His website, Michael Mann, with two N's, dot net. You can tweet him at Michael E. Mann. Uh, Michael, welcome back to the program. Uh, thank you, Tom. Always good to be with you. Or Dr. Mann. It's so, so good to have you with us. Um, I, I, I was going to, we were going to start off with this, you know, tipping points and what's going on here, but I just, this literally at the top of the Washington Post, uh, the logo is breaking news. Uh, we are in trouble, in quotes. Global carbon emissions reached a new record high in 2018. Uh, they said that they had hoped for uh, the, you know, it to be flat. Those hopes have been dashed. In 2017, global emissions grew 1.6%. The rise in 2018 is 2.7%, or is projected to be by the year's end. A record high of 37.1 billion tons of carbon dioxide a year. Uh, China going up 5%, India 6%, U.S. up 2.5%, EU down 1%. What does all this mean? Yeah, so uh, it is disappointing, uh, given that there were several years in a row, uh, 2014, 2015, 2016, where emissions had actually flatlined or even slightly declined. And so it looked like we were beginning to see that, uh, you know, that curve bend downward. Uh, we ultimately needed to come to zero, to go to zero within a matter of uh, a decade or two if we're going to avoid crossing the threshold of dangerous interference with our climate. Uh, these latest numbers suggest that, um, you know, we, we, we've now seen an uptick. Uh, what we thought was the sort of the, the flattening of the curve it was sort of a, a bit more temporary, and we're seeing increases again. Now, overall, uh, the rates of increase have gone down tremendously, but we're still seeing increases at a time when we'd like to see decreases. And that's a reminder that the commitments uh, that the various countries of the world have made uh, in the form of the, the Paris Accord uh, was signed several years ago by every con country, including the United States, despite the fact that uh, Donald Trump has threatened to back out of it. Um, those commitments got us a bit, about halfway to the reductions that we need to avoid dangerous warming of the planet. Uh, but it hardly solves the problem. We need to improve on those commitments. And right now, uh, politicians are meeting in Poland in the next conference of the parties, uh, subsequent uh, to the Paris Accord and the other uh, recent conferences. Um, and this is an opportunity uh, for countries to begin to ratchet up those commitments. Um, we're probably not going to see a new set of commitments in Poland at this latest conference, but this is supposed to be laying the groundwork, in essence, for uh, a, um, a future ratcheting up of our uh, commitments, the, co the commitments of the various countries of the world to decreasing their carbon emissions. I don't know if you, you saw the article in the New York Times uh, this week about, or last week, about the, it's titled Insect Apocalypse. Um, it, it points out that, uh, you know, well, it started, I mean, on this show, maybe six, eight, ten years ago, some, you know, a trucker called in and said, you know, 20 years ago, I'd drive across the country and I'd have to stop every, every, every stop and clean the bugs off my windshield. Now I can drive from coast to coast and not do it once. Um, and then all kinds of people called in from all over the country saying the same thing. They're not seeing bugs anymore. This article pointed out, and we, and we were speculating on the air, thinking that it was uh, neonicotinoids or pesticides. But this, uh, these latest studies out of Costa Rica's jungles, out of 70-plus uh, 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 pristine uh, forest preserves in Germany, where there are no pesticides, uh, they're seeing 70 to 80 percent declines in, in total insect population by mass. Um, and as a consequence of this, birds are starving. And the only thing that they can come up with is that when you uh, warm just a, a couple of degrees, it starts sterilizing male insects. Their, their ability to reproduce collapses. Uh, you combine that with the, the wildfires we're seeing in California, the, the floods we're seeing, the hurricanes and all this. I mean, haven't we already passed, arguably, a, a threshold that is destructive climate? Yeah. I mean, it, it depends on how you define dangerous. Um, if you talk to people in California, if you talk to the folks who are studying the insect decline, uh, if you, you know, talk to people um, in you know, North, North Carolina, uh, Houston, who have been impacted by these unprecedented superstorms. So whether it's the unprecedented wildfires in California, the superstorms that have hit uh, our coastlines in recent years, 
the, the sort of um, endless seeming uh, spate of thousand year floods, um, record floods that we see um, over and over again now. Uh, we are venturing into uncharted waters, and we are already seeing impacts, climate change impacts that could reasonably be defined as dangerous. It's a question of how bad are we willing to let it get. If we warm the planet by more than two degrees Celsius, three and a half degrees Fahrenheit, um, then you know the, the scientists who study the impacts of climate change will tell you that's where we really see you know, the stuff hit the fan. Uh, and there is still time to make the commitments necessary to avoid crossing that threshold. But there is an urgency now, uh, unlike anything that we faced before. We really have to not only bring emissions to flatline when they're actually increasing, but bring them down now by, you know, 5% or so a year for the next decade or two if we are going to avoid crossing this threshold going past the two degrees Celsius exit ramp uh, uh, on this you know, carbon highway um, onto three degrees, three and a half degrees for every half a degree Celsius, uh, one degree Fahrenheit additional warming of the planet, the impacts get that much worse. And we're already seeing, by any stretch of the imagination, dangerous climate change impacts as we speak. Yeah, Guatemala has uh, been hit really, really hard by climate change, and, and a lot of farmers are being thrown, you know, pushed off their farms by, um, you know, just uh, these droughts and things. And they're showing up on our doorstep. I mean, you know, this is uh, Donald Trump screaming about the immigrants. A lot of these people are from Guatemala. Um, what what do we have to do? What what's what what is the specific action plan to to avoid these uh, tipping points? To to try to, to you know reduce our emissions and go into negative emissions, or at least reduce yeah, them? Yeah, so some tipping points we've already perhaps crossed, and others are imminent, and others may um, lay, uh, you know, lie in the future, uh, and we don't know exactly where they are. So the only sensible you know, policy is to stop emitting carbon as quickly as possible. And you know, there are lots of things that we can do in our everyday lives that decrease our own carbon footprint, and, and we should do those things. Um, if you're willing to change your diet, um, I no longer eat meat. Uh, you know, if we shift away from a meat-heavy diet, we can decrease our carbon emissions that way. If we use less energy and if we elect to get our energy from renewable sources by putting up solar panels, um, by uh, purchasing a power plant from uh, your a power company that is uh, entirely uh, renewable driven, which uh, is the case uh, with our power, uh, our uh, you know, electricity plan. Um, there are lots of things that we can do in our everyday lives that save us money, that make us healthier, they make us feel better about ourselves, they set a good example for others to follow, but that's not enough. We need government incentives. If we are going to see the sorts of reductions in carbon emissions that we need to see, 5% or so a year, uh, for uh, decades into the future, eventually, as you allude to, bringing those emissions down to zero, and maybe we even need to bring them negative later on in the century if we are going to avoid crossing ever more dangerous thresholds of greenhouse gas levels and resulting climate change. We may literally have to start sucking some of that carbon dioxide back out of the atmosphere. Um, so now, ultimately, a price on carbon a market signal um, will help us move in the direction we need to, and electing politicians who will support our interests rather than the polluting interests who often fund their campaigns, who will vote for a price on carbon. Amen. Amen. Mike, Dr. Michael Mann, uh, his book, The Madhouse Effect, michaelmann.net. Uh, Dr. Mann, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Always good. Great talking with you.